Hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar of uh, automating the subscription management for a better customer experience. Before I go ahead, let me just outline the webinar logistics. Lines of all the participants will be muted throughout the session. I understand you might have a question or so, so please feel free to use the chat window uh, to ask your questions and I'll be uh, I'll be trying to take most of the questions, if not all, by the end of the session uh, in the Q&A uh, in the, in the, in the Q &A section. My name is uh, Ninad and I'm the business development manager here at iNogic. Now, speaking of iNogic, uh, we have been uh, we have been uh, a leading service provider and an ISV for past more than a decade and we have exclusive Dynamics 365 products. We are very much active in the Dynamics 365 community and our blogs are not only popular but also appreciated by the community. We truly truly believe in the philosophy of one-click solution which is basically building productivity apps that reduces multiple steps which otherwise a CRM user has to take. Now, as you can see on the slide, we have various applications on the offering. I would like to take a moment and very briefly describe some of them. Mapletics. Mapletics is certified from Microsoft Dynamics 365 and helps businesses around the world to plot plan, visualize, and analyze Dynamics CRM data on a map. It offers seamless mapping services. Some of the key features include managing territories, route optimization, smart appointment planner, and many, many more. One of my favorite app from the bouquet is the Map My Relationships. Map My Relationship is a productivity control that provides mind map view of the Dynamics 365 CRM data on a form. It helps the users to visualize connections and relationships between entities or related records in a single view. Now, having said that, let's see today's agenda. I'll start with the market scope for subscription economy, then the need for the subscription management, the challenges with subscription and recurring billing management, some of the key features of our subscription and recurring billing management solution and how you can manage and streamline your subscriptions and your recurring billing processes. We'll also see a quick uh, yet effective live demonstration followed by the Q&A session. So let's, let's start with the market scope. Now the subscription business or the subscription economy has grown nearly 6x. Now that's more than 435 percent over the last nine years and when the subscription economy grows you also need, you also need to have a subscription management now i'm a man of numbers so for me the numbers are very very critical so let's look at some of the numbers that uh, emphasizes the need for subscription management the first one is almost 72% of the consumers want to pay for what only they use and 64% of the consumers feel more connected with companies whom they have a direct subscription experience and a staggering 75% believe that in future people will subscribe to more and more services great so the need for the subscription management lies in the three three areas the one reduction in the churn rates we definitely don't want any of our customers to walk away once they have started utilizing our products our services effective SaaS management and of course increased productivity with automation having said that let's see what are the challenges that generally the organizations face uh, while having subscriptions or while handling subscriptions, especially manually. So when you have a manual handling of all the subscriptions, billings and invoices, it is really, really tedious process. 
plus if if the entire process is manual chances of a human error is is very very high managing customer churn during subscription renewals a big task very very rarely or in fact i can i can be audacious to say there is no provision to handle the proration and finally handling the partner margins and the tax calculations so how does our solution the subscription and recurring billing management and what key features of the subscription and recurring billing management are very very critical when it comes to any saas based company the first one is the opportunity to invoice now i'm extremely glad to inform that today we will be looking at opportunity to invoice in in the live demonstration but just imagine uh, from the time an opportunity is entered in the crm uh, getting converted into a quote that getting translated into a subscription schedule and then generating the invoices and not only invoices but also sending the reminders for the invoices now that is what a seamless um a process would sound like now to do all this stuff we do use a lot of schedules and one of the most important schedules is the margin schedule now this is especially important if if the saas based organization uh, organization has a partner network or a reseller network we also have a lot of revenue analysis using the saas metrics now, we have a consolidated view of met prices like the annual recurring revenue the monthly recurring revenue average revenue per user the churn rate and so on now these uh, these metrics are extremely important for uh, for the top management of the organization to get a feel and the real holistic view of the businesses and not just getting a view but also basis on these numbers uh, the top management can also take a course correction decisions and that's where the 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 metrics are extremely important we also support automated tax calculations and the most probably one of the most important schedule the subscription schedule itself it's an automated billing system for a very very flexible billing cycle and to support the subscription schedule we also have various plans and pricing models we have different plans pricing models like flat fee per unit tier volume pricing and stair step you name it and we have it so time for a very very quick demo now when we talk about a demo let me just give you a heads up about what all things we will be covering in today's demo we'll definitely start with uh, the opportunities the products the plans we will we'll convert an opportunity into a quote uh, we'll convert the quote into a subscription schedule we'll generate the invoices and then we'll send the reminders for for uh, those invoices that have been generated plus uh, i also have a couple of things in my mind which is the partner margin the reseller margin or a couple of use cases especially the most awaited one which is the proration and the late fees so i'm trying to cover the entire end to end sales life cycle let's move into a live demo so let me open up my subscription and recurring billing management so let's start with the revenue metrics now as i mentioned during the uh, introduction part that the uh, the subscription and recurring billing management provides uh met prices that are extremely helpful for any organization whether it's the monthly recurring revenue annual recurring revenue average revenue per user customer lifetime value and the total active users subscriptions the customer churn rate and the subscriber churn rate now i understand this is the most ideal number that would be uh, that every company would be aiming to have a 0% churn and that's where just looking at the numbers i can get a lot of insights about how my product or services are performing now again a quick heads up this ssrs report is shipped along with our solution the subscription and recurring billing management however you can also have your own power bi reports that can have uh, uh, you can leverage the the capabilities of the power bi report especially the slicing dicing if you want the monthly recurring revenue for a particular product or for a particular services and so on 
that is definitely possible uh, in case you have the enterprise uh, license for the Power BI as well. So the next one, the heart of the subscription-based business. Now, I personally feel that the products are definitely the heart of the subscription business. You have a certain product, you have a certain services that you want to that the, that you want the other users or the end users to subscribe to. So the product is where we have configured. And for today's demonstration, basically, I'll be talking about uh, extensively about the Kanban board. The Kanban board is one of the uh, uh, solution offerings by iNogic. It gives a beautiful visualization of all the out-of-box entities as well as the custom entities. So let's see what's there in the product. At the prima facie level, looks like a very, very uh, out-of-box uh, product entity. It has the default in it, the default price list, and so on. However, the magic lies in the subscription management tab. So if I go to the subscription management type, a tab, this is where we can actually define the product as per the SaaS based requirements. We can start with a uh, ease add-on. So uh, yes, our solution also supports the uh, in case if, you, if your business has a product and also an add-on product we can configure it right at the product level. We can also define the charge type, whether it's recurring or one time as per the requirement of the business use cases. Now, for, for today's demonstration, I'm just keeping it as recurring. And then we have a couple of plans associated. So we have, uh, like I had mentioned, we, we cover a lot of uh, different options. So let me just open a default plan right here. So let me select the product as Kanban. And imagine the permutation and combinations that we can use. We can have a separate plan as per the currencies. So in case your, your business caters to a global audience and you want to raise the invoices as per the local currencies, we can create multiple plans as per the currencies. The next one is the billing unit. So we can have the billing unit as day, month, week, month, or even a year. And then comes the crucial part, which is the pricing model. So I personally feel we have covered all the pricing models, whether it is flat fee per unit, tier, volume, or even the stair step. So using the permutation and combinations of different currencies, billing unit, and pricing model, uh, almost all the business use cases can be easily covered with our solution. So let me go back to my product and let me open one of the plan. So here's my Kanban board year stair step. So as I had mentioned, I have uh, selected the currency as US dollar, the billing unit is here and the pricing model is stair step. And once I define these plan, this is where I'm defining the plan details. So since it's a stair step model, for up to 50 users, I'll be charging 600 US dollars for a year. Uh, for 51, 200 users, I'll be charging uh, 1200 US dollars and we can define as per our business use cases. So once we have the product and the plan in place, now let's start an end-to-end -end journey. So let's start with an opportunity. So let me just open the opportunity. And here's my opportunity view. And hey, by the way, that's the Kanban that I was talking about. A beautiful visualization of all the uh, opportunities. So let me hit on new. And let's say I have a partner. And the name of the partner is Catalyst Technologies. And they are looking out for Kanban board for one of their end users. Let's name them as Technotronics. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to give a name to this opportunity, which is basically Catalyst, Technotronics, and this is for Kanban. And now I come back right here and I'll select my build to customer and ship to customer. Now, we have introduced this build to and ship to customer uh, nomenclature so that we can identify the partner and the end user. So in my case, Catalyst is the uh, is my is my partner and hence catalyst would be my uh, bill to customer and the moment i select customer as catalyst technologies you may have noticed that automatically a partner margin has been applied now with subscription and recurring billing management we use the concept of schedules 
And one of the schedules is the margin schedule, which looks something like this. So I have defined a couple of margins, uh, which is the which is basically the partner margin and the special margin. We can create as many margin schedules as as per uh, our requirement. And further, what I have done is I have associated under the account of Catalyst Technologies. I have associated the partner margin as a default margin schedule. So what happens is every time I select my build to customer as Catalyst Technologies, uh, the the default partner margin would be automatically applied. Interesting, right? So let me just close this ship to customer and let me make this as Technotronics. Now, yes, in case your business doesn't use the reseller or the partner network, or if the uh, if your business has has acquired the customer directly, in that case, the end user would be my bill to customer as well as the ship to customer. Okay, then having said that, let me just go and add some product line items. So uh, I'm just using the default price list, trying to save this, and now I'll be adding a product. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Generally, it doesn't take this much time, but I guess today I'm lucky. Oh, finally. So here's my uh, product line items, and now I'll go ahead and add a product. So the moment I add a particular product, it gives me a quick, quick create form. However, one of the most interesting field is this flag, the show subscription fields. Currently, it's disabled, right? But the moment I turn this flag on, the fields which are relevant to the subscriptions or SaaS based business would be visible just like this. So the moment I turn this on, I get the subscriber count, I get the unit plan, the commitment period, the interval. So the, the basically the fields which are relevant to the SaaS based, uh, business model. So let me just hit it as Kanban board. The default unit would be automatically uh, coming up and making this as 50 and I'm selecting a particular plan. So let's say I'm making this plan as a year uh, yearly model. Now comes an interesting one, which is basically the commitment period and the interval. So I'll take a couple of use cases here. Let's say uh, my partner catalyst comes to me and says, hey, Nina, I'm going to give you a commitment of three years that I'll be using your solution but i want the invoices to be raised on a yearly basis so what i'll do is i'll make the commitment period as three and i'll keep the interval as one this essentially means that starting today three invoices would be generated every year so the first invoice will be generated today the second one would be generated in 24 2024 and the third invoice would be generated in 2025 that's how easy it is. I'll take it one step further. I'll change the plan and I'll make it as a monthly plan. And say, now my catalyst comes to me and says, Ninar, I want, I, I'll give you a commitment of one year, which is basically 12 months, but I want you to generate the invoices on a monthly basis. Fine. So, what I'll do is I'll make the commitment as 12 because the billing unit is monthly, 12 months translates to one year and the invoices would be generated every month just to add on to this use case uh, there might be a chance that uh, that my that my partner says i'm giving you a commitment of 12 months but i want the invoices to be generated on a quarterly basis perfect make the interval as three so this is how easy it is to configure the commitment period the interval as per the your business use case so let me switch back to a yearly plan and make this as one year perfect and uh, do i want to give a manual discount now as a sales representative that's something from which i'll run away so i'll not put up any manual discount and that's my tax schedule i'll, I'll, I'll not touch the the complex part of tax issue but our solution does support the taxation as well. So I'm pretty happy with this. Let's me hit on save and close. 
<coughs> Excuse me. So as a sales representative, I have just entered a new opportunity. Uh, I've added a product line item and I've selected the appropriate values within it, the plan uh, and everything. So now if you notice, uh, we have started getting the numbers. So if you recollect for up to 50 users, we were charging 600 US dollars for the Kanban board. And a discount of 120 has been given back to the partner. Now, why, that, why did we give this discount? That's because it's a partner margin. This business is brought by the partner and I had assigned the 20% partner margin and that 20% is, <clears throat> sorry, reflected right here. Then comes the taxation and that's my total amount. Works well, perfect, great. The next step, let's go to the quotes and generate a new quote. So moment I hit on the new quote, all the values that I have either entered up to this point or the values that might have been calculated up to this point will be pre-populated in the quote, whether it's bill to customer, whether it's ship to customer, what was the product, what was the user, the discount in terms of partner margin, everything would be pre-populated right here on your screen. Now, yes, in the real world, there might be a lot of to and fro about the quote because the moment I send this quote, the customer might come back and say, hey, I want a discount or an added discount and so on and so forth. Uh, well, we are using, we are leveraging the quote entity from the CRM. So that scenario works seamlessly well, even with our solution as well. So for time being, let's say I'm just activating this quote. This is the quote for which I have got an approval from my partner, the Catalyst mm -hmm. Technologies. Now, once my quote is, is activated, here's a magical button, convert to subscription schedule. So what happens is the moment I hit on this button or I click on this button, this quote would be automatically translated into a subscription schedule just like this. So again, all the values, whether it's bill to customer, ship to customer, the partner margin, everything would be pre-populated right here in my subscription schedule. Well, it has also given me a start date, which is basically today's day, but it's an editable thing. You can definitely change it as per uh, the real world scenario. Now, I will go to this subscription details tab to configure a bit more for the subscription schedule. Now, as we can see, we have got the start date, we have got the end date, we have got bill every, which is one year. Now, this all things were actually populated from the code when we were generating the code. Great. Now, let's talk about these simple features. The first one is the duration. Now, duration is basically the tenure of the subscription. So, either we can have the bill specified number, which is one in this case, for one year, or if you have a business model which is on the lines of kind of Netflix where there's no end date, every year the subscription is getting renewed unless the customer comes back and says, hey, from this year, I don't want to renew. So you, we can easily select the no end date. The next one is the generate when. So when do you want to generate the invoices? Do you want to generate the invoices on the next transaction day? Now, just to give you a gist, Here's my next transaction date. So if I want to generate the invoice today, that's how it will be, it will be taken care. However, let's say you have a multi-year contract and you want to generate the next invoice five days prior to the uh, due date. So we can select the number of days before the next transaction date. So for time being, I'll keep this as current record is empty. And now comes the schedules. So for time being, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to associate certain schedules right here. But please bear with me for the next five minutes. I'll go in details of all these schedules. So reminder schedule, I'm just putting it as the invoice reminder. Delay charge schedule, I'm just putting it as late fees. Renewal reminder is basically, basically subscription renewal reminder. So just to give you a heads up, if you want to send uh, the reminders of the invoices, you have to use, this. the solution will use the invoice reminder schedule. If you want to apply some late fees, the solution will use the late fees as the delay charge schedule. 
and if you want to send a reminder once the subscription is going to end which is somewhere around 13th of june 2023 in that case we'll be using the rules that have been mentioned in the subscription renewal reminder perfect i'm all set and let me just hit on save and now comes a very very important point of generating the invoices so the first things first i can just go here I, we have provided you with the button which is the generate invoice now let me hit on this generate invoice and a new invoice would be generated right here so i'm not a mind reader but i can read a question in your mind Ninat, do we need to generate the invoices manually because that's not going to be a, a, a ideal scenario for us. We have probably hundreds and uh, hundreds of invoices. Well, no, you don't have to generate the invoices manually. It's just a provision, but this entire process can be easily automated with our workflow triggers under the automation. So what we need to do is here's my workflow trigger. And I've already generated a workflow trigger for auto generating the invoices. So what it basically does is, <clears throat> excuse me. So this auto generate invoice would be running every day. Now why every day? Because that's what I have configured that it needs to run every day. And it's going to call a, a workflow, which is auto generate document. Now this auto generate document workflow is the same workflow that I had called a few moon, few moments back as an on demand workflow when I clicked on the generate invoice button. So what basically does is every day at so and so time, this workflow is going to go through all the subscription schedules and is going to check for the next transaction. Detail. And if the next transaction date matches with today, it's going to generate the invoice automatically. So that's how easy it is to automate uh, generating the invoices. So let's confirm whether my invoice is ready. So let me just try to refresh this. Oh, wow, here's my invoice. Invoice of 522 works seamlessly well. If I just open this invoice, I get all the details about the product, about Build to ship to everything working absolutely well. <clears throat> so, what's the next step? Once my invoice is generated, ideally, I should be sending a reminder to my customer that hey, your invoice is ready. So, to do that, so to do that, I'm again going to call one more on demand workflow. This goes without saying. Again, this entire process of sending the reminders can also be automated with the help of the workflow triggers. So let me go to, go to the flow and let me try to run a flow right here. So before I hit on this flow, let me show you an interesting fact. The details section right now is currently entirely blank. And now I'm going to, I'm going to run the generate reminders for the invoices now what happens is once i hit on the generate reminders for the invoices recollect that i had associated a reminder schedule remember invoice reminder so now our solution will check for this reminder schedule and it will find three rules return or configure right here so it's basically saying that i have set three rules send the invoice reminder one day before the due date one day after the due date and on the due date as well now no worries for example if if the on the due date has has been triggered and the invoice becomes paid then the after due date will, will never be triggered we have taken care of that no worries at all but what it basically says is on the due date you have to send the invoice to the account manager now what's an account manager so with with the subscription and recurring billing management we have also provided something what we call it as the functional like here so here's one of the active functional role the account manager and these are my functional contacts so john austin is acting as the account manager for catalyst technologies let's keep this back of the mind 
and what happens now is if I open the rule, basically on the due date, an invoice copy will be sent to the account manager of my bill to customer. So that's what is going to happen. So let's confirm if that has actually happened with the invoice. So let me go to the details and let me try to refresh this. So here's my email record. And if I just open it, you will notice that the email has been sent from the logged in person, which is Sam. That's me in this case. And it has been sent to John Austin, who was nothing but the account manager for Catalyst Technologies. Now, this entire process can also be completely automated. Wow. So we saw about opportunity, code, subscription schedule, generator invoice. And once the invoice has been generated, send the reminder uh, to the uh, to the bill to customer. Now, a couple of use cases that I really want to uh, touch base is the first one is the proration. So here's one of my existing subscription schedule. As you may notice, it has already started on 1st of January 2023 and it is valid till 31st de December 2023. Now, I, uh, 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 on a personal request, uh, I, I want you to remember these dates because this is, this is going to play a very important role in the proration. The subscription is starting on 1st of January 2023 and it's going to end on 31st December 2023. Perfect. So let me just open this schedule for you. As you can see, we have the uh, bill to customer, ship to customer, the, the active subscription line, which is basically Kanban board for 50 users. And it also has an invoice that has been generated for $522. Great. So hypothetically, let's say that Catalyst technology comes back to me today and says, hey, Nina, you know what? There's an increase in the number and uh, there's an increase in the users. And I want to uh, upgrade from 50 to let's say 75. Now, what I'll be doing is I'll just come back to my subscription line. And within my subscription line, I have, I have provided with the revise button. So let's hit on the revise. Let's make the change in the subscriber count from 50 to 75. But now comes a very, very important question. Yes, there is an increase, but how do you want to apply the charges? Now different businesses can have different rules and we have tried to cover almost all the rules. Let's say one of the organization says, we really don't bother when you are coming. The moment there is an increase in the user size, we are going to charge you for the entire billing cycle. So that's where we can select the start from billing, current billing cycle. This essentially means that I'll be charging for the entire period or from 1st January 2023, which is the start date, till 31st December 2023, which is the end date. The second option is billing from the current month. This means I'm going to charge the customer from 1st June 2023 because that's my current month till 20, sorry, 31st December 2023. The next one is immediately prorated. This means I'm going to charge my customer from 14th June, that's today, from 14th June 2023 till 31st December 2023. The next billing month, I think now it, it's, it, it, it might have started making more sense. It will be starting from 1st July 2023 till 31st December 2023. Start on the next billing cycle, wait till 31st December 2023. And when it comes for renewal, start from 1st January 2024. Now, sometimes one of my prospects or the customer comes back to me and says, hey, you know what, Nenad, I don't want any of these. 18th June is my lucky day and I want the billing to be starting from 18th June, a specific date. By the way, 18th June is my birthday and that's why it's very lucky. So that's the custom bill date. So the moment I select a custom bill date, I can select an appropriate date and from that day till the end of the 
subscription cycle. So in, in, in this case, it would be starting from 18th June and it would be applied till 31st December 2023. Great. However, as per most of my expectations and uh, uh, discussions with the prospects and the existing customers, immediately prorated is the most used option. So the moment I make this as immediately prorated, let me just hit on save and let's confirm it. So what will happen right now is once the processing is done, <coughs> we will find one more invoice which will have the value something like 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 this. So here's my new invoice, which is basically charging the customer from 14th June 2023, which is on proration basis till 31st December and with the exact value that it's supposed to generate. So that's how easy it is to work with proration with our solution, the subscription and recurring billing management. Another interesting scenario is about the late fees. So if your business use case has, has a, a provision that once the due date of the invoice has passed by, you need to apply a certain charges. So let's see what we have. We have a subscription schedule that has started very recently, the 1st of June, 2023. And it also has an invoice for which the due date is 1st June, 2023. Perfect. So the due date has gone by and still I haven't received the payment. So what I can do is I can add a certain late fees. To do that, I'll again call one of the uh, on-demand workflow. Again, this entire process can be automated with the help of the workflow triggers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit on generate delayed charge. And what will what will happen is remember there was a uh, there was a delay charge that we had set with the name as late fees and what it basically does is that it adds one product with the name as delay charge and it takes about five percent of the invoice value and it's going to add it in the same invoice so let me come back to my invoice and let me just refresh this so here's a new product which is delayed charge and basically it's going to add 5% of the existing value of the invoice. Easy, easily done with the help of the subscription and recurring billing management. One of the last uh, features that I want to uh, demonstrate, now, there are many more features. This is the last feature that I will be touch basing on. It's the trial. So in case you are on, in a SaaS based business, uh, you have a product, we generally provide trials. Some companies might give a one day trial, some might give seven days. iNogic prefers to give 15 days trial. Some might give even more, right? So how to keep a track of it? Quite easy. So let's say I'm hitting on a new, let's say my customer is Catalyst Technologies and the product that they are looking out for is, let's say, Maplytics. The plan, I'll select the appropriate plan. I'll give the subscriber count. And here we can define for how many days you want to give the trial. And let's hit on save. So what happens is, uh, as a sales representative, I can keep a track, track of all the trials that we have provided. And once the, the prospect is happy with the customer or with the product, and he says, hey, Nina, you know what? I want to go for a paid subscription. The magical button comes right here, convert to subscription schedule, and the rest of the process would remain the same. Uh, we also have now added the extend trial in case if, if you want to extend it by some few more days uh, and to honor the request of your prospect, we can also extend the trial. Now, I'm pretty sure by now uh, you must be uh, you must be imagining the subscription and recurring billing management uh, in your organization. So. I'm just starting a very, very quick poll. I just, I'm just curious to know uh, the features that I have, I have, uh, I have uh, demonstrated. Which feature do you think will be most useful in your organization? So I'm just launching this particular poll. 
whether it's the SAS metrics analysis, whether it's proration, whether it's automation of the billing cycles, whether it's reminders uh, and renewal automation or the tax calculation itself. Oh, proration. Wow. 100% SAS metrics analysis. True that. True that. So, automation of the billing cycles. Wow. So, right now the race is in between SAS metric analysis, proration, automation of billing cycles, reminders. I, I, I personally feel that reminders is a fantastic feature that, that uh, reduces a lot of work. But, anyways, the customer is always right. Perfect. So uh, thank you guys. Thank you for uh, taking out the time and uh, and casting your vote. So just to give you a, the winner, the clear winner is automation of billing cycles. Perfect. Now with that being said, let me just switch back to my PPT and let's move ahead. So uh, the subscription and recurring billing management is basically available for Microsoft Dynamics 365 version 9.0 onwards and uh, the deployment can be done on Dynamics 365 online as well as the on-premises. So before I open the floor for the Q&A session, let me very briefly uh, walk through the most frequently asked questions that I have come across while talking to numerous prospects and customers. Now, do the subscription and recurring billing management app works across devices seamlessly? Whether you're working with a laptop, whether you're working with a desktop, whether you're working with a tablet, whether you're working on a mobile phone, the, the, the subscription and recurring billing management app will definitely work. What Microsoft Dynamics products do you support? Uh, just, just answered a few moments back, uh, uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365 9.0 onwards, and uh, it can be deployed online as well as optimizers. Which SAS metrics reporting is made available? Uh, a lot of SAS metrics, but uh, top of my head, it's the monthly recurring revenue, annual recurring revenue, the customer lifetime value, average revenue per user, churn rates, and so on. Uh, is there a limit to managing a huge number of subscriptions? Absolutely no. There is no limit in, in, uh, in the number of subscriptions that you are about to manage. The fifth one is customers upgrade, downgrade their subscriptions very frequently. Will this adversely affect the billing cycle? No, it won't. Uh, in fact, uh, during my demonstration, I just demonstrated how easy it is to upgrade the users, uh, recollect from 50 to 75 and so on. How to get started? Well, it's really easy. You can get started in, in just 10 minutes, right? So uh, hop onto our website, www.energy.com, or you can go to Microsoft App Source, uh, download the subscription and recurring billing management, fully functional 15 days trial. Set it up in your uh, sandbox instance and, uh, and, and get a complete hands-on on the awesome features provided by the solution. A very very slight chance that while uh, configuring, while installing, if you if you get any kind of issues, if you need any assistance, just drop an email to crm at the rate inogic.com. That's crm at inogic.com, and I'll be very happy to pick it up and uh, assist you further for any issues, challenges that you might be facing. With that being said, the floor is all yours do do let me know if you have any questions any queries please 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 use the chat window okay so it says can you show the workflow automation used for sending the reminders uh well that's that's pretty much the same way so i'll just go to the workflow trigger i'll i'll hit on new i'll say I'll just give a name, uh, auto reminders, it's temporary name given to it. I want to do it on a daily basis, so I put it as X days, put it as one. And instead of selecting the invoice, I'll now select the auto generate reminder. Select this particular one, select a particular date and time as per your uh, business use case. Just hit on save and close, you're done. So uh, from now on, uh, apart from 
generating the invoices it will also check if 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 the reminders needs to be sent for a particular invoices and it would be completely automated okay one more question i oh, sorry we we have uh, uh, existing uh, existing uh, subscriptions just give me one second to expand this right so we do have existing uh, subscriptions is there a way to import all of them into your module yes we do we do have that as well uh, uh, we'll be very happy to share uh, uh, some of the excel templates for subscription schedule the, or and also for the uh, subscription line items, uh, you can very well use it uh, to 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 import it uh, into into the subscription and recurring billing management module. Um, in case while importing, if you face any issues, as always, we are there to help you out. Just drop an email to crm at the uh, I'll be very happy to share the templates uh, as well as uh, as well as the uh, in case if you face any issues, I'll be very happy to assist you as well. uh will we be able to access a recording of this session uh yes definitely um our team will uh, uh, will will share uh, the the recording of this particular session with you via email very very shortly so uh, look out for the email you will be receiving uh, uh the email uh, with the link of this particular uh, recording very soon great so i think uh, in case if you have any more questions or queries please please feel free to uh, send an email back to uh, crm at the rate inogic.com and i'll be happy to pick it up uh, if, if required i'll be extremely glad to give you a one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, demonstration of the subscription and recurring billing management as per your business use case uh, any day any time just drop an email with that being said i really want to say from the bottom of my heart, a very, very big thank you for uh, attending this webinar. You know, I hope uh, that you liked uh, the subscription and recurring billing management uh, solution and my presentation as well. Uh, most of you might be aware we, we come up with a lot of webinars on, on different, different solutions and different use cases. So please look out for uh, our next webinar. We, we seriously hope uh to attend we seriously hope and pray that you are a part of the next session as well till then thank you and have a great day bye bye, -bye.